I am bored. So I took this half-used clay bar and these pottery tools and I made this. You see, I was on YouTube one day and I came across this particular video. And before chess and before backgammon came in the world, everybody played this game. It lasted for 3,000 years. It's the kind of game I love because you can explain the rules in five minutes and then there's some actually quite serious decisions you have to make that, that affect the game. I never use mathematics or statistics or calculations or anything at all like that because I can't do it. So instead of buying this replica from the British Museum, shipping it to my country, waiting for a couple of days, I decided to make it myself from the... Remind me the whole point of this video. What? Uh, you're bored. <laughs> <laughs> So, let's get to it! Oh. Like I said, I have this leftover clay, some pottery tools, and a whole bunch of acrylic paint to finish off the final texturing of the board game. And as always, our dog, Tuta, is supervising the process. What do you have to say, Tuta? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're so let me just crack open my year and a half old clay packaging to start flattening out the top part of the board. I'm going approximately for a 5mm thickness, as you can see. Working and kneading this piece of clay because it is quite old. And I'm also trying to rehydrate this piece to make it more malleable. Give your meat a good old rub. Hey, okay, this needs to be extended more. Then lengthwise, this thing has to be like up, up until this point. So I have to stretch it. You have to what? Stretch it. You have to what? Stretch it. You have to what? Ah! Yeah, boy. We get rid of bubbles by doing this. That's how you smooth it out. This process needs to go quite fast because as I'm speaking and as I'm doing this, the clay is drying. So I have to finish the final relief sculpting that is gonna match the original design with the one that I'm trying to make. So let, let's continue. Now, as you can see, I'm getting to a point where I'm detailing little flourishes and decorations within these square modules. And all of these modules have their own particular powers when you place your playing pieces according to different kinds of rules. There's a simple game and there's a more complex version of rules that you can use while playing this game. So, time to do some surgical details. So I'm going to be making these five areas with this pen nib top. It's going well. Uh, I'm having fun. I'm listening to Irving Finkel right now, talking in my ear about this game. When I went to school, the teacher wrote to my parents in maths saying that I needed to be sedated before class because I behaved so badly and I've never been able to count above 10 on my own. Uh, I think I'm gonna do the eyes now. Explosion. Yeah. It is done, almost. Uh, there are a few details that I want to add. If you'll notice in the reference image, there are these small white ivory squares that are inlaid within the edge of this entire board. I want to replicate that, but also I want to imitate how these indigo rectangles are placed in between all of these square tiles. 
later on I can also paint them in a particular kind of texture to elicit the same sort of luxurious effect, which would be nice. The board ornamentation is done, and uh, yeah, I'm really glad the way it looks. All that's left for me to do is to make four tetrahedral shaped dice pieces, and uh, 14 uh, playable pieces for two of the players, which are uh, white pieces and uh, black pieces. So... But before I do that, let me remove this board from this cutting board so that it can dry properly. I'm gonna transfer it over to here so that the paper can absorb a little bit of moisture from underneath. And I'm also gonna put a couple of books on top of this board if, to make sure that throughout the drying process, good job, sir, in order to make sure that this clay piece is not going to deform uh, throughout the night while it's going to be uh, drying. All of this is just to make sure that the geometry is precise. So, let me do this. Get in here and help it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Anxiety. I'm sweating. <laughs> nice. We have to wait for at least uh, 24 uh, hours. Okay. So, yes. Amazing. Uh, only a few things that are left uh, is the die pieces and the clay pieces. Right. Ah, uh, yes, the last part of clay sculpting where I get to shape the playable pieces and the die, which got me thinking about how the ancient Sumerians used to do this same exact thing. It's kind of crazy and fascinating that I, or anyone who wants to try to do this, gets to look into this very past through this process. Yes, the final pieces are done, and now all that's left is for us to wait for these pieces to dry. And we're going to continue tomorrow. But before we do that, we surely deserve an artist's break. Which means... A few kilometers later. Ah, yes. It is indeed time for another art break. And for this particular one, we have a correspondent overseas. David? Yes, Soso. Could you show us an example of what modern or contemporary art looks like? All right. So we're right now at the Mass Mocha Museum. How about we jump in? Now in this museum, we have such artists as Joseph Grigley, exhibiting their wine bottle capsule tower that is signifying what the stress amounts to in his daily life. Mm. As we continue, we approach a single seat roller coaster cabin on a pink rail. Provide a lot of information you can read if you pause this video. After which we continue with Kelly Ray Adams and their artwork, which represents the student loans in the US that totals over $1.8 trillion. Oh my, I can't even fathom this enormous financial issue since I have studied in the post-Soviet university where the building was falling apart. Now let's check this out. David, David, David. Yes, sir. Could you take me to an exhibition where there are more interactive art pieces or so? Well, lucky you. I'm right here. Tranquility. Whoa. <laughs> that sounds like a Christmas bell. <laughs>
thanks. Très heureux. Ah, yes, the pieces are dry as biscuits. In fact, if you take a look at this board, yesterday it was all flippy floppy. Whoa, my gosh, look at how cardboardy it is. It's pretty nice. Uh, I'm gonna sand the edges uh, for the side walls to fit in very nicely. I'm gonna add, apply a primer to this clay bar so that it sticks well enough while, uh, when I'm gonna apply the glue. As for the walls, I'm gonna be using this PVC board, which uh, we have an ample amount of uh, here in my archive. The archive. Yes! But yes, this will be the board material that I'm gonna be using because uh, it is waterproof. It uh, doesn't bend or warp when the paint is applied on it of any sorts. It's a perfect material for model building as well. So yes, let's get to it. Okay. Mmm, yes, time to me to slice <laughs> Pizza! Ah, no. Stop it! Ah, instead of measuring you know, everything super precisely, mark it like that, something like this big. This will all make sense once I'm build this entire thing, so let's keep watching. And don't forget to subscribe and like! Oh yes, subscribe, that's that's right, that's... Hit the notification bell like a... You can imagine there's like walls all around it and it's gonna be working in this way. Wow! Yes, the framework is finally done. All of the necessary parts are built for me to finally glue the top board on top of the main chamber with the drawer that I made, which if you'll notice, I've designed the inner drawer uh, with a T-shaped kind of a stopper, allowing this uh, drawer to hold itself in place so when I'm removing all of the pieces from outside of the chamber without the drawer kind of dropping outside of it. And also this middle section, there's an additional sort of a wall because you know, sometimes you kind of want to slam the playing pieces with aggression in order to destroy your opponents. So to avoid the entire board breaking in half and caving in, you know, this is a nice structural support to add within the box. Yes, but if you'll notice, me and my brother are very, very tired. Very tired. Yes, and uh, I think uh, the painting and, well, first priming and painting and varnishing, we're gonna leave it for tomorrow tomorrow when there's gonna be a bit of daylight as well and it's gonna be a little bit more true true yes good morning earthlings what a day it would be without a proper dosage of caffeine ingested inside our bodies in the shape of cafe cubano so we have a mocha so we have a mocha pot, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of coffee, two glasses, glass ones preferred, so you can see the proper foam forming. Mmm, so good. Now, let me show you the process. So first, we open up our mocha pot. Now, keep in mind, there are two main chambers. One that holds the water, one that holds the coffee grains, and the one where the boiling water passes through the coffee chamber and then pours into this final pouring chamber. So there are eight steps. I mean, uh, do I say everything now? Yeah. Ah, so there are eight steps. Pouring the water, filling up the coffee in... Filling, uh, filling the... Filling the coffee... Oh, it's the, <clears throat> filling the coffee grain chamber, closing the mocha pot, putting it on medium to low heat, pouring the sugar into the glass in advance, then putting the mocha pot to boil on low to medium heat, letting the first few drops pour into the sugar, then we thoroughly mix it to foam up the coffee. Meanwhile, we let the rest of the coffee boil, and once the coffee stops boiling, we pour the rest of it into the glass cup. 
mixing up a little bit and then finally enjoying the foaming process. Supreme. Yes. Indeed, very good. And I am about to move on to priming the little drawer because you'll notice if I'll close this entire chamber, I won't be able to properly apply paint on these sides in such a way that the paint is going to go deeper and beyond these outer walls. So I'm gonna grab this, prime the outer layers as much as I can, including the underneath side and everything from the inside. Paint it with a general looking sort of a texture. You'll notice the sort of uh, paint that I want to replicate. It will be similar to the inner lighter square texture that is kind of like beige, yeah, sort of earthy color. So yes indeed, now it is time for me to prime. Milk. Quick little thing, uh, these need to be sanded a little bit more. Oh, yes. Mm, coolest of the beans. Now I am going to paint the base color of the drawer the inside of the drawer chamber a little bit. And uh, that's pretty much it, I think. Alrighty then, ah! Indeed, and I'm using warm colors such as magenta, yellow, and orange to mix with a white paint so that I can get this earthy, creamy looking color. And uh, this process right now is quite straightforward, you know, painting this box, but you'll notice that later on, I'll be adding little dabs of dark brown and maroon red color in order to give this box a deeper weather texture to create an illusion of sort of like time and how, you know, realistically speaking, this is an ancient and royal game of Ur from the ancient Sumeria. What was that? <laughs> I am lost for words. Yeah. Uh, there's so many of these intros I've done. Like, okay. Mm. How many reactions am I supposed to generate? There? Thousand. Listen, I have finished painting these pieces and the dyes. How cute they are. This is the way you can tell the number of the, how many steps you can take with each and single uh, playable piece. If one of the tips is shown without the white tip, then it counts as a zero. And if all of them are without the white tip, then it's a complete zero, you can't move at all. So now I think I'm gonna glue the board on top of the mainframe, then start painting it uh, all over all of the ornamentations and the bodywork, and then I'm gonna varnish the entire board with the uh, small little playable pieces and the dice as well. So... So how was it? Oi! What are you talking about? What are you talking to me? What are you talking to me? What are you talking to me? <laughs> you grab a couple of bookies, baking sheets, paper. A few inches later. It has been glued. Solid. Solid, solid, solid connectione. Time to paint, huh?
Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. What are you talking about me? Step aside, Donnie. <laughs> ah, says, I, I can't let you do it. Get away, Donnie. Everybody's having a good time. We have a barbecue already. But it could be better. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody understands this reference. Props. Props. Continue on. So we got to take a little break because it's Georgian Christmas time because our calendar is a bit different uh, and it's happening in 7th of January. So we have to quickly celebrate and then go back to working. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> And we're back to work. Yes. Yeah. I am also very tired, but I am willing to finish this project before before 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it is. What time it is? It's it's almost 2 a.m. It doesn't feel like it. Yeah, but we have to finish it today. Yes, for tomorrow. We are going back to the village. Ah! It's so peaceful there. Barely any noise. The city hustle and bustle is restaurant noises and music every day in and out in the same routine of music playlists playing outside of my window. But the task at hand is to color the top part of the board. Finally, the most important part of the painting process, the top side of this glorious board game, where every aspect of the painting can shine through, including this liquid paint dabbing technique to fill in the engraved ornamentation contours. And as I wipe the excess amount of this dark blue color, I also look and find if I need to individually add more of the same paint with a small brush tip in areas where it requires more definition. Just the red ones are left and I'm gonna be done for today. <laughs> you can see in your eyes, it's like red. Hey. 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm so close to finishing the final ornamentation. Might as well, you know. Yes. So... Uh... Completely sane and uh, normally rested uh, being right here. Alright, it's done. All that's left is to varnish it, but uh, I want for the paint to fully dry. So I think it's a good idea for me and David to go and take a nap. <laughs> yeah, at this point it's like 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a three hour nap or so. Why are we doing this? Listen, it's artist's life. Sometimes you're compelled to do things. There was no reason to yeah. stay up. <laughs> no, there's no new reason for me to make a royal game of True. war. True, that's why. Become an artist and just circum... 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 Circumference. I've... Succumb to the artist. Succumb to win. this uh, unexplained suffering. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Let's just jump to the next day and see the final result.
so that is it. The board game is done. Ah yes, the trials and tribulations are over. Finally, I cannot yep. stop here! But we're actually gonna play this game. What did you think? We're gonna stop here? No! Indeed! So check out our next video where we'll battle in a single match to see who will be the lucky winner. Who'll get to pour ice cold water over the unfortunate loser. Thank you for watching. We hope you had a wonderful time and ooh, look at this. All of the beautiful names of our patrons from our Patreon page. Ooh, very nice. And if you want to see your name on this list, you can go and check out our Patreon page with all the quirks and perks. Mm. Till next time.